my course on fundamentals of electrical engineering. After moving into the second module, we were doing electrical machines. We started on transformers after DC machines. And this is the first section of transformers. But of course, today we try to conclude the first section, wherein again, some, um, some aspects of calculation of efficiency, especially with hysteresis loss and eddy current loss, okay, the, um, their components and their influence on the efficiency, etc., are going to be taken up in this session. Okay? Uh, they're def definitely different from the uh, second session, where again, we uh, discussed efficiency. Okay? Uh, so let's move to the first problem, wherein ex uh, the first uh, word that uh, strikes us happens to be the stresses loop, okay, or magnetic material has an, uh, has an area of 5 centimeters square. So we see the area, okay, and the shape, of course, we know the shape of the stresses loop. There are, of course, square loops as well, uh, with the scale given as 1 centimeter is equal to 2 ampere turn, okay, and 1 centimeter is equal to 50 millimeter. So do both... Uh, something that, that's related to B as also something that's related to H, okay, uh, is given here. Uh, the total hysteresis loss is, of course. In such cases, it's best to work with um, the dimensional things. Like, for instance, when you're talking about uh, millivebers, okay, so we are having 15 to 10 raised to minus 3 as 5, okay, then uh, better remember d5 by dt okay if that is the case then you get the voltage isn't it okay so we have what is called as uh, multiplication by frequency okay so uh, so we so, so that's 50 hertz and then there is a multiplication by 2 because that gives you h okay uh, and then finally the area square okay so that's 5 okay so together it will come up to um, uh, 25 so what do we have here 5 f h into area okay so if you look at the dimensional uh, content, you will see that this is the same as equal to the loss. Okay, so there is a voltage component and there is a current component. Okay, because ampere turn is essentially current multiplied by number of turns. Okay, so dimensional aspect is much better with respect to how to do this. These kinds of problems often uh, dimensional compatibility will uh, lead us to a solution. Okay, that's the reason why F comes on the numerator because we will see voltage is related to d5 by dt. Okay. Anyway, moving on to the point, uh, problem number two, a single phase 400 volt 50 hertz transformer has an iron loss. Okay, so iron loss includes both hysteresis and eddy current loss of 5000 watt at the condition. Okay, when operated at 200 volt at 25 hertz, so now the frequency has changed and the voltage has also changed. So the first thing that we need to check is always going to be U by F, whether it remains constant or not. Otherwise, you can't compare many things because everything changes. Okay. So, we, uh, so in this case, we see it's very clear that 400 by 50 is the same as equal to 200 by 55 hertz. Okay. So, if you see hysteresis and current loss uh, in, in transformer, because that, these are the constants of iron loss when compared to DC machines, wherein we think about no load losses. Okay. So, here we are having, yeah. So, we in the earlier session, we talked about iron loss. Now, iron loss has become more detailed as having two components, the hysteresis and the current loss. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, when operated 200 volt, 25 hertz, the iron loss is 200, uh, 2000 watts. So, earlier it was, uh, yeah, it, uh, yeah, so now it was 5000 watts. Now, it has come down to 2000 watts just because both the voltage and the frequency have come down. Okay. When operated 416 volt, 52 hertz, the value of the stress loss divided by the eddy current loss. So, we need a ratio of stress loss to eddy current loss so long as 416 by 52 is also the same as equal to uh, five, uh, five, uh, yeah, 400 by 50 or uh, 200 by 25, which is all 4. Okay, so that's what we got to first check. And it's obvious that uh, 416 by 52 is also the same as what we got when we divided uh, 400 by 50 as also when 200 was divided by 25. Okay, so if that is the case, uh, yeah, now then, uh, then, then we need to, uh, then we can now use the, uh, use a particular concept wherein, um, we, wherein uh, the total iron loss is given by AF plus BF squared. Okay, just like we had in the earlier case of DC machines, where it was AN plus BN squared. But here it is AF plus BF. Everywhere it's all BF squared. Everywhere it's all iron. So iron responds to the same aspects. Okay, so AF plus BF square is equal to 5000 or 5000 by 50 is equal to A plus B into 50 in the early case. Okay. And that's equal to 100. Okay. Similarly, for the next case, 2000 by 25, 
that is W by F is the same as equal to 80, which is the same as equal to A plus B into B into 25. Okay? So, earlier, okay? so the third case is going to be A plus B into uh, 52. Okay? So, meanwhile, uh, we are using these two um, uh, equations of 100 is equal to A plus B 50 and 80 is equal to A plus B 25. We can estimate B as equal to a small value 0 0.8 and A as a big value is equal to 60. This is always going to be the case. Okay? So, now hysteresis loss by the current loss is simply, of course, you are having... Um, yeah, so you're going to have uh, 60 in, uh, divided by 0 0.8 into 52 as, of course, um, uh, 60 is going to be A and in the denominator, you're going to have B, um, uh, BF. So that's the reason why A is 60 and uh, that is uh, that is uh, the hysteresis loss component. But of course, there's a F, that, but both the Fs in the numerator and denominator cancel. So we are having 60 divided by 0.8 which is B multiplied by 52 the new frequency so that's equal to 1.44 okay so that so we come to some different aspects of hysteresis current loss also in the third problem where what does it say the core loss of single phase 230 by 152 core loss iron loss we are all same okay in um, in uh, transformer in, in DC machines or machines rotary machines you also talk about no load loss okay uh, transformer is measured. of course there are other aspects there okay uh, the core loss of a single phase 230 volt 150 volt 50 hertz power transformer is measured from 230 volt side by feeding the primary from a variable voltage variable frequency source vv triple uh, vf while keeping the secondary open circuit okay so uh, the same thing 230 uh, 50 hertz but we are now measuring from 230 volt side with the okay so, so what what is uh, what follows? The core loss is measured to be 1050 for 230 volt 50 hertz. Okay, so 1050 divided by 50 will give you A plus B F. Okay, the core loss is again measured to be 500 watts for 138 volt. Okay, and 30 hertz. Okay, so immediately the first check is always whether V by F remains constant. Otherwise, you can't use this technique because this is applicable to um, uh, to constant flux and then that happens when V by F ratio is the same. Okay. So, hysteresis is eddy current loss of the transformer for the third case, 230 volt, 50 hertz. Okay, or the, the earlier case needs to be found out. Okay, so first step is as usual, check V by F. If it is equal, it's right. Okay, so in the, because 138 by 30 is the same as equal to 2, uh, 230 by 50. Okay, so if that is the case, 1050, which is the which is the iron loss for 50 hertz divided by 50, is the same as equal to you can calculate it's 21 and it's equal to A plus B F. That is where F is equal to 50 in this case. The second case, 500. That's the total iron loss divided by 30. This is the same as equal to 50 by 3. Okay. And that's equal to A plus B into 30. B into 30. Okay. So, you can solve for both. That is both for A and B. And you will see that you can be a B is equal to. Okay. You don't need to calculate everything then and there. You can say that B is equal to 13 by 16. It's a small value. And A is equal to large value 61 by 6 comparatively. Okay. So now hysteresis loss is the same as equal to 61 by 6 into 50. That is 508.3. Okay. And a current loss is 13 by 60. 61, 6 is, 61 by 6 is A multiplied by 50 is giving you AF. Okay. And then the other component is BF square. B is 50, uh, 13 by 60 multiplied by F square. That is 50 into 50 gives you 540. Okay. So the, these are the two components. And the answer A is the right answer in this case for the third problem. Okay. Fourth problem may also be the same. Okay. Because every, all the similar problems which continued over the years have been picked together and kept um, uh, have been picked and kept together. Okay. So, fourth problem is a 50 hertz transformer having equal hysteresis at the current losses of at rated excitation is operated at 45 hertz at 90% uh, of its rated volt voltage. Okay, so immediately you have 50 hertz, 90% is 45 hertz, and the voltage is also at 90%. So, V by F is the same. Okay, so same flux. Compared to rated operating point, the core losses under this condition. Okay, so the new condition is 45 hertz, then the voltage has also come down to 90%. Okay, so what do you see? Again, V by F ratio is uh, is equal to uh, uh, is equal to 0.9 volt divided by 0.9 to 50. Okay, so everything is fine. Okay, and then 0.9 times the voltage divided by 0.9 into 50. Okay, so it is 90% uh, of voltage divided by 90% of 50 hertz. Okay, so now we go for A into 50. Okay, 
is equal to b into 50 square. Why? Because the both the losses have been equated to 50 hertz. Okay, that's what is given here. That is, and that's the first statement. That is a 50 hertz transformer having equal hysteresis and loss. Okay, so f is equal to b f square. Okay, so we get a relationship between a and b, where b is the same as equal to a by 50. Okay, then total loss is w at 50 hertz is the same as equal to. Okay, you are having the same loss. So 2 into b. F is enough. 2 into B F square is enough. Okay. Because uh, yeah. So we have, since we have. Uh, we know the value of B. Okay. So that's equal to 2 into. Um, um, or we. Uh, yeah. So the, or 2 into A into 50. That's better. Because uh, A F is uh, hysteresis loss. Multiplied by 2. That will give you the total. Uh, that, that will give you. The, uh, the combination of hysteresis and ethical loss. Because they are equal. So 100 A happens to be. Okay? So 2 into A into 50. This is better. That's why this has been chosen. Rather than B. Okay. So if, uh, so if you have the. So 2 times. That is both for head D and head D current a hysteresis loss two times a f k okay? so a into fifty is giving you hundred a k okay? at forty five hertz what do we do we uh, have a f plus b f square okay so a is uh, a is a and b is uh, a by fifty okay so multiply by multiply uh, a by forty five and b by forty five square okay so that that gives you eighty five point five a okay so obviously from a fifty hertz case wherein the total was uh, total loss was hundred a now it has come down to eighty five point five a because we used a as it is but b we substituted for a by fifty okay and the second case in the early case they was the same okay so it's obvious that there is a reduction of 14.5 14, 14 percentage okay so that's also a similar problem but then they all uh, use the same concepts okay so very intelligently the question is manipulated or twisted uh, for um, uh, for different purposes okay so moving on to the fifth problem in open circuit there's a diagram obviously uh, there's a it, there's a curve so it's uh, it's clear that when power is uh, plotted against um, against frequency or power by frequency is plotted against frequency then it is uh, it is the same as equal to w by f is equal to a plus b f k okay? so it's a straight line with an in, with an intercept of a and a slope of uh, slope given by b okay and f of course happens to be the, the with the um, uh, horizontal axis so the variable on the horizontal axis okay and so we can see that a is equal to 10 and b is okay the total height when you look at um, a PF by uh, that is W uh, that is the total power uh, the, the the total ion loss by uh, by frequency as equal to uh, at equal to ten at that particular point the total height is going to be five okay and this happens over a range of uh, frequency of fifty okay so B can be said the same as equal to the total height that is five divided by the total distance that is the the height divided by width that is fifty so that's equal to point one okay so A and B is already calculated from the figure. Now let's see what we, what is required out of us. An open circuit test is performed at 50 hertz transformer using variable frequency source and keeping V by F ratio constant to separate its CD content and hysteresis loss. The variation of core loss to frequency as function of frequency is shown in the figure. Okay, the hysteresis and the current loss of the transformer at 25 hertz. Very simple. A is 10 multiplied by F that gives you hysteresis loss. B is a point 0.1 multiplied by 50, uh, 2, uh, 25 square because it, uh, the, we require uh, the uh, eddy current loss at 25 hertz. So that will give you another component. So together we can see that option B is right because AF is a 10 into 25, 250 and B is 0 0.1 multiplied by 25 into 25 which is 625. So the answer is 62.5. Okay, so very simple. Uh, definitely any problem in this uh, genre you will be able to do. Okay. So moving on to the sixth problem, for a single phase, two winding transformers, supply frequency and voltage are both increased by 10%. Okay, so when you increase both 1.1 times voltage and 1.1 times frequency, the ratio remains the same. Okay, so the percentage change in the stresses loss and the current loss respectively are. Okay, so we see that we are having. Um, a 10% increase in frequency will give rise to a 10% increase in hysteresis loss. Okay? The other will be frequency square. So 1.1 square which is 1.21. So 1.21 percentage of increase is going to be there. So option A is obviously the most appropriate and correct answer. Okay. What do we have next? Seventh problem. A 220, 440 volt, 50 hertz single phase transformer operates at 220 volt, 40 hertz supply. Okay, so it was 220, 50 hertz, and now it is 220, 40 hertz supply with second rewinding. Then what happens? Okay, so we realize that in the first case, it is going to be the the uh, the V by F ratio is 220 divided by 
uh, 40 uh, that's 220 divided by 50 which is the, which, which is as it should be so that's equal to 4.4 okay it should have in that case the voltage should have been 198 okay so if you are you retaining the same 4.5 ratio then 4.4 multiplied by 40 should have been 198 okay and now so we see that the voltage has so the voltage is more than it should have been when you are applying 45 uh, so, source of 220 volt 40 source okay so what happens is that we are having two components one is the hysteresis loss which is uh, which is proportional to bm raised to 1.6 that is the flux density raised to 1.6 multiplied by frequency okay so when the voltage changes the flux density also changes okay and frequency it's only there's only okay as we notice af plus bs okay, okay? but as, as such that flux remains constant b by f ratio is maintained um, uh, maintained constant but here it is not so so bm changes okay flux changes flux density changes that's why bm raised to 1.6 comes into the figure and eddy current loss is proportional to bm square f square okay so whatever change had been brought in the voltage is now compensated by f square or in other words eddy currents don't change but that's not the case for hysteresis loss it is bm raised to 1.6 and there's, there's no f raised to 1.6 it's only f so definitely hysteresis loss increases but eddy current loss remains the same because the compensation is the higher voltage is compensated by the there is and the square is compensated by the frequency square which comes together in the expression for hysteresis loss okay for eddy current loss hysteresis loss there is a direct proportionality to flux frequency but there is a b the, the proportionality of flux is now going to be flux density is going to be uh, at the rate of b, b max raised to 1.6 okay so there's no compensation okay so hysteresis loss increases that's in the uh, that's in the in the c and the option c and while eddy current loss remains the same okay so uh, this is just to show you the two components okay the, the picture is there for that okay so now coming to the eighth problem yeah eighth problem tells us that a single phase 100 kva 1000 volt 100 volt 50 hertz 1000 by 100 volt 50 hertz transformer has a voltage drop of five percent across its series impedance at full load okay so that's a voltage drop okay of this three percent is due to resistance so what is the remaining percent it's reactance and if three percent is resistance four percent is reactance such that the total is equal to five percent okay so those things must be obvious to you okay the percentage regulation of the transformer at full load with 0.8 uh, 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 lagging power factor so what is happening here the resist the, re the resistive drop is lagging at an angle corresponding to 0.8 power factor okay at the same time and then um, uh, perpendicular to it we have we are having the ix component okay and both of them on the horizontal axis have a component as given by ir into 0.8 and ix into the cosine of the other angle that is the the complement of um, uh, the angle corresponding to cos inverse point a which is equal to 0.6 that is the, the cos of that is equal to 0.6 so now we see that you can uh, you can see that that the three percent drop in resistance is uh, will correspond to three into 0.8 to get the horizontal component and the four percent count uh, uh, voltage drop in the reactants will be given by will will correspond to on the horizontal axis four into 0.6 which is equal to four uh, which is equal to 2.4 so one point uh, uh, 3 into point is 2.4 together they make 4.8 percentage okay and so a is going to be right but of course we have not read the question yeah we are not read it completely the percentage regulation of the transformer at full load with point yeah we did we did we did read it okay so let's okay so perhaps so now for, we are moved into regulation wherein everything is calculated on the on the um, uh, on the upf axis you can say or, or or on the horizontal axis okay so let's see the ninth one in a transformer zero voltage regulation okay so voltage regulation is always there unless of course you operate it with the leading power factor okay so a possible leading power factor of c option okay then you have a chance of getting what is called as a uh, the zero regulation okay and that happens at a particular power factor okay so that also should be known okay yeah so we have we are going for the 10th uh, problem okay uh, yeah this is uh, this is one uh, but the last way a single phase 10 kv 50 hertz transformer with 1 kv primary winding draws 0.5 amps and 55 watt at rated voltage and frequency at no load a second transformer has a core okay so there are two transformers so the first one was discussed okay so now we have a second transformer with the with, it, with uh, the core with all its linear dimensions root two times so the area will be of course it will be either r square or if, or if it has two sides 
uh, this a into b or a square in all these aspects we see that root 2 into root 2 is going to come and on the denominator just a root 2 okay of course we are talking about the uh, the, the inductance okay where, where we are having n square mu naught mu or a by r okay let's see if we, we need that okay uh, um, yeah so root 2 times the corresponding dimension is the first transformer the core material and lamination thickness are the same in both transformers the primary winding of both the transformers have the same number of turns okay mostly everything is the same okay if our rotor rotor is 2 kV okay so early it was it was 1 kV now we are giving 2 kV at 50 Hz okay that, that remains the same it's applied to the primary and second trans, second transformer then the no load current and power respectively okay so okay so um, uh, the, it was remembered that inductance is given by n square into mu naught mu or a by l okay so that is okay, if you are if you are calling this as l1 in that case a is changing l is changing how you are having of course the number of turns haven't changed the, um, the banking material has not changed so n square remains the same mu naught mu r remains the same for both l1 and l2 l1 is the first case l2 is the second case when the area has reduced by two times and the uh, the length has uh, reduced by root two times the length okay so we see that you can have what is called as a root two times l1 is going to be l2 yeah, I suppose this is clear because there's 2 on the numerator and uh, root 2 on the denominator. So root 2 L1 is going to be, uh, yeah, so you are going to have root 2 times, yeah, you are going to have root 2 times L1 as equal to L2, okay. So now if 1 kV is given, okay, L1 into I01 by T, which is going to be the voltage, okay. So LDI by DT, okay, so that's, uh, so a time has been taken, okay. And L2 into I02 by, because that's the second current is given by 2 kV. So we have, we are equating the first uh, situation where 1 volt 1 kV was given and then the inductor was L, uh, L can be assumed as equal to L1. So L1 into Di1 by DT, okay, that is 1 kV. In that case, what is 2 kV? 2 kV tells you that it's equal to L2. That is the new uh, inductance which is given by root 2 times L1, okay, IO2 by T, okay. So the same time is taken into consideration, okay. So we see that IO2 is the same as equal to 2 multiplied by yeah, so we can see that we can compare these two things and we can see that IO2 is the same as equal to root 2 times 0 0.5, okay, because we are having 1 by 2 as the um, as the voltage uh, ratio, uh, 1 kV divided by 2 kV, okay. So, uh, so now we have, so we can, we know L1, we know L2, time is the same, so IO, uh, L1 IO1 by L2 IO2 is the same as equal to 1 by 2, that's the reason why we see that IO2 is equal to root 2 times 1, 0 0.5 at all, okay. So no, no load power will be given by 55. That is going to be the, yeah, so yeah, that's going to be the uh, the watt, okay, multiplied by okay, 2 into, uh, yeah, 55 watt, okay, into 2 root 2. That tells us that, the, that yeah, so we already got uh, the current as equal to uh, root 2 into 0 0.5, which is equal to 0 0.707, okay. So now to get the power, we have to multiply the, uh, the, the voltage by the current, okay, and uh, you'll see that it's the same as equal to, or in other words, the power has increased because the current has increased by uh, so much, the voltage has also increased. So everything put together, you can see that if we had, in, earlier we had 55, it can be multiplied by 2 root 2, and so the power is going to be 155.6. I suppose it's clear that we are having yeah, so we are we are seeing that uh, the the voltage is multiplied by two and the current is multiplied by root two. So that's the reason why we are seeing that we are having um, uh, fifty five into two root. Okay, so the earlier current was I O one was equal to zero point five. Okay, so I suppose all aspects are clear. They have they are uh, written in a box such that you can uh, you can easily correlate. Okay, so moving on to the last of the problems in this session. Wherein again a transformer is seen at the center, there are two dots, okay, the dots signify the fact that if current enters the rotor terminal in both aspects, the mutual inductance is going to be positive, okay. So let's see what we require here. We have 50 hertz AC source on one side with a one ohm resistor there. This X reactance connected across coil number uh, one, where which has more number of turns because the ratio is two is to one. And on, on coil number one, which, uh, which is the prior, secondary of the transformer, we have 110 volt and ZL. Okay, the load shown in the figure absorbs four kilowatt. That is, ZL absorbs four kilowatt at a power factor of 0.89 lagging. Okay, assuming the transformer uh, transformer to be ideal, the value of the reactance X to improve the input power factor to unity. Okay, so X is now put across the whole system. Okay. The secondary, whatever is in the, in the secondary, can be brought to the primary and then you can equate such that X will uh, remove the uh, reactive component. Okay? So, how do you start? You can start with the reactive power delivered. Okay? That's equal to, uh, yeah, so 4 kilowatt divided by 0 0.89, which is going to be the 
the power factor multiplied by cos sine of cos inverse 0.89 that gives us two, uh, 2049.44 var okay so this is the reactive power delivered okay and then we, we see uh, so yeah, how do you find out um, uh, the reactive power v square by not r but x v square r by r will give you the active power v square by x will give you the reactive power okay and v we know it's the same as equal to the applied voltage and x uh, x is what we need to find out and this is equal to 2000 49.4 okay so or in other words it's equal to since the applied voltage is 220 so 220 um, into 220 divided by x is going to give us 2049 so x can be the same as equal to 23.6 as simple as that okay so i suppose it's clear that uh, this is an easy problem and uh, you will be able to do it uh, how do you get 220 i suppose that's also clear because secondary side is 110 so primary side will have to be double that because of the number of turns being more okay so that's all that is there in this module but i hope um, uh, that um, the, the, the inferences taken are very clear because many things need to be grasped uh, perhaps i forgot to tell you just in that, uh, earlier that the, that that the voltage on the primary is going to be 220 just because the turns ratio is given and then uh, uh, v square x of course we know and v square x of course we are we are estimating everything on the primary such that because x happens to be on the primary that's the reason why you just find out the total reactive power requirement okay there's no uh, turns ratio etc need to be taken for uh, active power and reactive power here we are having the reactive power delivered how do you get that because it, you know that active power taken is 4 kilowatt from the whole system okay be it on the primary or the secondary it takes 4 kilowatt so divided by power factor will give you the kva multiplied by sine of the cosine of uh, cos, cos inverse of 0.89 will tell you that reactive power is equal to 2049.4 okay 0.44 for bar okay once that is done that's equated to v square by x on the primary side such that x can be found out okay otherwise you will have to take everything to the uh, to the secondary okay so we have v square by x as equal to 2049.44 is equal to 220 square divided by x so x is very easily 23.6 okay and moreover uh, the most important problem was the 10th one wherein earlier we were already given uh, the, the earlier current as 0.5 the earlier power as 55 watt and so we see that the earlier current is enhanced by root 2 just because uh, the voltage is increased to 2 uh, two kV and the dimensions have changed okay so when dimensions change um, L2 is equal to root 2 times L1 okay so uh, why does it change uh, so much because the area is um, the the, the 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 second transformer as a core with all its linear dimensions increased okay or in other words the flux increases because the dimensions have increased okay so there is a two on the numerator and root two on the denominator so overall effect is to increase the inductance okay and uh, when uh, so in comparison with l1 and l1 and uh, l2 what do they do they create a voltage by virtue of lenses law as given by l1 di1 dt and l2 di2 dt instead of di1 dt you're making it linear so I l1 io1 by t is equal to 1 kv and l2 io2 by t is equal to 2 kv so this is used just for comparison there's no dimensional content involved so you can say that 1 by 2 is the same as equal to l1 io1 by l2 io2 so we already know io1 is 0.5 so you can calculate io2 okay so and then once you have that now current has increased by um, by root 2 times the voltage has increased by 2 times so 2 into root 2 divided by, by multiplied by 55 gives you total power okay so uh, uh, yeah so this more or less everything has been covered especially the fact that hysteresis loss and the current loss can be separated okay it's also combined together to obtain the total loss okay so and there uh, please remember af plus bf square is going to give you the total uh, ion loss and A corresponds to hysteresis loss and B corresponds to eddy current loss so long as okay and they remain constant so long as V by F ratio remains the same because the flux has to remain in the constant otherwise uh, all these estimations are not going to be right okay so thank you